Now, against this backdrop, South Korea is focusing on communication with Russia and China. Our page explains complicated diplomacy surrounding the Korean Peninsula. Almost about a month after South Korea's new foreign minister, Cho tae was appointed, he spoke on the phone with his Chinese counterpart, Wang Yi, for the first time. During the 15-minute call on Tuesday evening, Wang invited Cho to visit Beijing to develop bilateral relations further. In response, Cho agreed to schedule a visit via diplomatic channels at a time that's convenient for both sides. The two also agreed on the importance of managing supply chain stability and decided to seek new sources of development through deepening bilateral trade and investment. On North Korea, Cho urged Beijing to play a constructive role in bringing Pyongyang back to dialogue and expressed concerns about North Korean defectors being forcibly sent back to the north by China. Over the weekend, Russia's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Andrei Rudenko, visited Seoul. Rudenko met with high-level South Korean officials, including National Security Advisor Chang Wo-jin and First Vice Foreign Minister Kim Hong-gyun. Seoul expressed concerns about Russia's military cooperation with North Korea and called on the two to act responsibly. But at the same time, South Korea and Russia agreed that further communication was needed for both countries' benefit. It's been a while since a Russian official has traveled to South Korea. In fact, it's the first time since President Yoon suk yeol took office in May 2022. This recent contact shows both countries' commitment to managing bilateral relations and preventing them from worsening, but challenges still remain. Watchers say the ongoing momentum for dialogue between the two countries is crucial, ahead of Vladimir Putin's possible visit to North Korea after the Russian presidential election in March. Pae Eun-ji, Arirang News.